Nej! 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 Gå bort! Gå bort därifrån! Gå bort! Gå bort! Lallemann sent me a few satchels of uh, verdant teas to try out. Uh, well, uh, actually, I begged, I, begged, I begged for it. All my bare minutes. No, no, but yeah. I asked them, could you send me some verdant teas to try out? And Michael stole them, so I have to ask them again. And now they ship them to me and not to Blue Goat this time. So I finally got to make a beer with it. And uh, as I'm brewing with the, the big system, the Gulden 70, I decided to do another split batch. So wasn't like aiming for like a versus beer, but uh, yeah, why not make a control? So I made a, a verdant beer and a US of five beer. I try to keep it quite simple beer, but yeah, we're gonna run through the recipe. So I have some brewing footage we can do a grain to glass with you, taste the beers, maybe core winner, and also run through, through the recipe. Recipe is already up on my. Patreon site. But no more talking, let's get started. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. So if you want to learn with me how to come better at beer and brewing, possibly, why don't you consider becoming a subscriber and hit the bell and smash the like button. And as usual, if you're just here to troll, smash the dislike button twice. So Let's start up with some brewing footage and come back and taste the beer, run through the recipe. Let's get brewing. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Sound right, boy. Sound right, boy.
that was the the brew footage. So let's pour the beer. I have they are above the same temperature because I have this fridge running really cold and it's very cold outside. So and I flagged this one. So I'm gonna go go and pour the US of I one in the unmarked and we're gonna pour the Wordent one in the mark. It's flagged there, you can see. Great. US of I one. And Wordent one. So you get to see some pouring porn. Did I say porn? It was dark in here, wasn't it? Here we have the two beers. As usual, they are not as dark as you see them. But I finally picked up this little trick using the, the caller checker. So, if we're going somewhere like... Nope. Somewhere like that. That's the US of I one. It's a little bit lighter than you see it there. And here's the, the verdant one. Something like, like that. So color is, is the same. How about haziness? Good head retention on, on both of them. Got a little more head there, but that can have to do with the uh, pouring side of it. They are about as hazy. Uh, didn't find this with anything like gelatin or something like that, but I did add some protaflock in the, uh, the boil. And for you guys who don't know what protaflock is, it's a finding agent like Wurflock. It's a refined Irish moss. Should start with the use of five one. And yeah, they, they, it is quite dark. It has to do with the with the grain bill. Gonna run through the the grains. I didn't do any like dry hopping, but I did use Cara Munich malt. Um, I'm I'm really like stoked about Cara Munich malt and uh, a little addicted to using it. So. It's an extremely potent malt, so maybe I shouldn't have done that, but amazing color beer, but not as dark as you see it. US of five. We have centennial hops in this beer, by the way. Light fruity aroma. It is a little bit different, the, uh, the weren't one. They both are, of course, quite cold. So maybe we should have left them the heat up. But yeah, I'm going to run through the recipe also so we can come back and taste them a little bit after the heating up here in the room. They are a little bit different, but they aren't like miles apart. The only difference here is, is the yeast. And we have two like a yeast. So start with the US of I one. Nice beer. Um, this has been sitting for like two weeks now since brew day. Maybe not. 12 days since the pitching of the yeast, because this was a no-shill. We'll talk about that when we go through the recipe. Really nice beer. Not super hoppy. I do get like the Cam Munich malt, but it's quite dry feeling. Let's go for the Wordent one. So much more flavor here. So this should be like more estuary because they are the exact same beer. So more flavor. Here we get more like a dark fruit, maybe ripe fruit, fruit, ripe fruit. I 
I do get a little like better mount feel on this one. It could be they aren't like <coughs> carbonated to exactly the same net level. Can't really. None of them are undercarbed. Use of I one is a little bit cleaner. And the Verdant one is a little bit more complex. As I said, more like estuary ripe fruit. Both two good beers. We'll try to core a winner. Um, we'll try to see if we can let them heat up while we run through the recipe. <coughs> we have to realize, because I've been doing this every time now, when doing the split batch, decided which was the best beer. But that was the, the best alternative for that beer in my mind. So it really depends. If you are doing a, a Pilsner style beer and, and looking at two different yeasts, has to be like the yeast that was most appropriate for that beer and not like for every beer. So just needed to to say that. Okay let's run through the the recipe. The recipe is already up for my patrons in the Big Dr. Hans recipe book. Both of them. It's named the Centennial Pale and this came out like a 5.1% beer. They all fermented out the same. Let's run through the, the recipe. This was a 60 liter batch. I used 9 kilos of pale ale malt. That's Brewmaster pale ale malt. I used 2 kilos of Munich light, Kassel malting. And I used, and this is like a 70-30 blend from, this is Swedish also, that's Swedish malt. Uh, Varbok Farn, so in the recipe it says 700 grams of wheat and 300 grams of Pilsner. And I used 750 grams of Weimann's Kala Munich Type 3. And yeah, they really impacted the color. So that's like 70% of Pele Malt, like 16% of Munich Light, 6% of Kala Munich. Five and a half percent of wheat malt and 300 grams of Pilsner malt. That doesn't add up to 100 percent, but I like rounded the numbers. And this was step mashed, and I did that mostly for fun to trying out the brewing system. 63 Celsius at 30 minutes, then I ramped it up to 71 Celsius, did another 30 minutes, and then I did a mash out at 60. I did not. I did a mash out at 76 Celsius for 10 minutes. I let this cool down to 85 Celsius and I added all the hops there. I did add some Protaflocken yeast nutrient at about 50 minutes left of the, the boil, but no hops were added until flame out. I let it cool down to 85 C. I added quite a lot of centennial hops, 455 grams of centennial hops at about 85C and uh, I let it cool down until the next day. Mold it over into two fermenters and uh, pitch the yeast. And this was fermented under pressure and yeah, it was both done in like four days. Started at 20C and finished at about 25C. So uh, and yeah, the OG was 1051 and they both finished out at 1012. So 5.1% beer. The recipe in the Dr. Hans recipe book I will add into the Hoppy Beers section. Pale Ale is best. Pale Ale folder. Use a 5 1. It too really reminds me a bit of a Swedish uh, soda called. Pomak for you Swedish guys. A little bit of that. Okay, the uh, verdant one. They are 
both extremely good beers. Of course, brewed, <laughs> they brewed by me. Maybe the US of Fire one is a little bit more mainstream, but uh, I do have to pick the uh, the Wordant one for this time. It, it is a little more complex. And I do enjoy it. Should we, looking at if I have a third glass, should we blend it? Okay. I don't have a third glass on me, so I would just do it like that. And we will taste the, the blend. So far, no blend has beaten the, the winner so far, but yeah. Maybe the blend is, is better. Not sure. <sighs> okay, so let's call the word one the winner this time, but yeah. As I said, it's, it's more about what yeast fits that beer, really. So don't like quote me on like Verdant being a better, better yeast. And of course, I'm not saying that because Lalleman sent me a few bags of, of yeast. So don't, my, my, my opinion will never be for, for sale. But of course, I will try to get uh, companies to send me stuff because yeah, doing all these things it takes a very lot, lot of my time and it's very expensive. So if you have the means, uh, consider supporting on Patreon channel membership or just buy me a beer down below. If you found this video like useful or enjoying or even annoying, consider becoming a subscriber and of course hit that like button and the bell and all of that. A big shout out to all you guys and gals who are supporting on Patreon and channel members. Oh yes, donating to the course. I couldn't do this without you. So thank you for keeping me in the loop. Yeah, so cheers guys and thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Dr. Hans out.